Okay, good morning, everybody. Oh, right, hey. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Woo. All right. Okay. Okay. And now, some of the we have the sound. Some of the juniors and seniors know me. I, I'm Dr. Scott. I'm a science teacher here at Archbishop Mitty. And some of you know my youngest son, Patrick. He's a junior here. I've heard people say that we look alike, so I wanted to just dispose of that notion right up front. So, so here's a picture of me. This is me when I was 16. Okay. Okay. Uh, and there, there's a picture of Pat. Oh wait, oh, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Maybe that's, that, maybe that's Pat, that's me. Uh, well, anyhow. Okay, Any, anyway. All right, we'll come back. Any, anyway, be as it may, you see no resemblance at all, or maybe a little bit. Okay, so there were, uh, today in the reading, Jesus says, today the scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. He said, this is your moment. There have been a couple times in my life when I really felt this is your moment. I want to focus on two of them today. One of them came near the end of my time in grad school, so let me just real quick give you my life in 10 seconds up to that point. Now, I, I was born in the East, I grew up in Maryland, I went to public school, or went to Catholic school through eighth grade, then went to public high school, went to uh, college in the East. I was on an Army ROTC scholarship, so I served in the Army for four years after college. I got to see the end of the Cold War, I had a front row seat for that. At the end of that time, I decided to do something really different. I came out to California. I was going to come out to Stanford for one year for a master's degree. That was 35 years ago now, so it's, yeah, time, time, time passes in a real hurry. I, it turned into a PhD program, which is basically a really long lab project and goes on for about six years. <laughs> so there, the Catholic community at Stanford was a really welcoming home for me. That I particularly enjoyed being part of this young adult group, which had uh, grad students, the people that worked in the community. We got to know each other really well. You know, I, I have friends from there, are still friends to this very day. Now, one of my friends, one of the members, his name was Jonathan Swift. I'll tell the English department, I, I swear to you, this re that really was his name, his actual name. He was a cancer survivor. He had had colon cancer, and he'd, he'd come back, recovered from it. So he embraced the moment. He knew that life was short. He said, this is my moment. I have to live every moment of my life. Remember, he came to a Halloween party. He was dressed as a white blood cell. He was celebrating the fact that his uh, blood counts were up so that, that day. So it was great. So as you might imagine, with a young adult group like this, you have a lot, a lot of young people together. We're all in our 20s and 30s. That we're, we're getting to know each other well. And, and people do date. People did get married within the group. This certainly happened. Now, I had dated people within that group. I was even engaged at one point. It didn't work out. Long story for another time. We won't go into that for today. <laughs> Okay, so I was coming to the end of that time, that uh, Cold War that I mentioned before, it had come to an end, it, it was over, and so for the world, beyond question, it was a great thing for the world, but for people doing scientific research, at that moment, it wasn't so great. Uh, money was being cut way back, jobs were really hard to come by. My advisor told me, you're gonna have to leave, you have to go somewhere, I mean, go to Europe, you can find a job somewhere, so okay, I, I've gotta go on, I, I really go on to the next, next part of my life. Now at that point, I'm gonna jump forward here. <laughs> Here we go. I met this young lady. I, oh, yes. Oh, my gosh. She's, oh, it's gorgeous. So, all right. So, so let's see. What's, what's happening here? Okay. So, so she seemed really nice, but she wasn't that interested in me. So I said, okay, you know, I, I've got to wrap up. I'm about to graduate. Get, let's, let's get on to the next part of my life. So <laughs> this is not your moment. We'll just keep waiting. Okay. Okay, okay, guys, here, we'll come in. All right, okay, so, but then uh, fate, fate intervened. Is that my friend John mentioned, his cancer came back. Oh, excuse me, it, it came back with a vengeance. In, in a few months, he was gone. So it really hammered him the point, uh, life is short, this is your moment, you have to live it now. So we had a memorial for John, and I, I spoke. Liz didn't really know him. She was new to the group, but then she saw. So there, there's some more depth to me. So maybe there's more there. So okay, let's seize this moment. Let's go with it. We started dating. We fell madly in love. We got engaged. 
And just uh, about a year later, we were married. And here we are here, and oh. And fun fact, Father Russ, the Stanford chaplain, he taught Mr. Brosnan. He was his teacher at Bellarmine, so it's a really small world. Okay, so life goes on. We were just a few years later, we had this little fellow. Oh. And in the blink of an eye, suddenly we had a much bigger family. There's all of us. That's Pat in my arms right there. Okay, so, so life goes really quickly. Life really moves on. So another blink of an eye. Here we are, just last August. Here, here's all, all those little guys. Right before Matt left for college. Yeah, you, yeah some of you may have known Matt. He was a, a senior here. And one more, so I, my wife and I, Liz and I, are still gone. Here's a picture from just a week ago. I was, we were out in Baltimore for my nephew when he got married. So there's my nephew with his beautiful bride. There's me. On the right is my beautiful bride from 27 years later. Oh, she still is, yes. Okay. Okay, so let me back up a little bit. Let me, let me back up back up moment here. So, so our children, I live in Santa Clara. Our children went, went to school there. They went to public schools. They went to Sutter Elementary, Peterson Middle School. Shout out to Peterson, great, great place. And I, my thought was there that our, our oldest was just going to go on to Santa Clara or Wilcox, both f fine schools, both really, really good schools. But he was playing Little League Baseball. He had friends that were, were talking about going to Midi. They had siblings that had gone there. And he was saying, oh, it's a great place. I really want to check it out. So. Okay, fine. Well, we'll, we'll give it a look. If, if you really want to, you can do it. So on his own, he figured out how to do the application, got his letters of rec, and worked out to do, come to visit Mitty. And I came, came along with him, went to a couple of things. We went to a basketball game, wanted to see what was happening there. It was amazing. I was sitting right over in these stands. I'd never seen basketball like this. I played in high school, but it was nothing like what, what they do here at Mitty. It was incredible. So really, really, really exciting stuff. I also noticed at the end of the third quarter, the Archbishop Mitty pep band, under the direction of Mason Kimat, would do a rousing rendition of Sweet Caroline. Up, up, up. The good times never seem so good. So good, so good. So good. So good. You got it. All right. You got the idea. <laughs> What did I know? Okay. All right. So you got the idea. That, really, that, that came in handy a couple years later when it uh, came time for Spirit Week karaoke. Hey, okay, so, so my, my second moment, second moment is really why I'm here right now. So after I graduated from Stanford, I worked at a, a lot of different places. I was all over the valley, and all, all kinds of spots. Last place I was at, I was a, with a startup that was acquired by Apple. So I was working there through like 2008 through 2013. I helped to develop the iPad, and I tell my colleagues, yes, I helped develop it, now I'm doing penance for that. <laughs> okay, so it was exciting work. It was very stressful. We were out on the cutting edge, a lot of things. It was cool, but in the back of my mind, I was thinking, now, maybe there's something more to life. I'd been a, a Cub Scout leader, and I, I'd worked with, uh, worked with youth as a park volunteer. I thought, oh, this is really cool. Maybe I, could I do this full time? Could I really make this work? So what, what's the mo? What does it take to go from, well, maybe you could do this, and now, no, this, let's do it now. This is your moment. So there were a lot of things that were happening. Now, again, I really emphasize the point, life is short. God really hammered home that point. So in 2011, my mom had, had married again. That after my, my dad had died a few years before that. Her husband was having health problems. Uh, George was really going downhill. And we saw that, you know, we were, there were a lot of, of emergency phone calls. My sister would call. Whenever I'd get a call at, at 9 o'clock, I'd know it's midnight in the east. Something's going on. What's happening? What, what, what now? And so, I, so we were trying to reach my brother also. We had our whole family, my older brother. I couldn't get a hold of him. What, what the heck's going on? So we, we came out. Came out to Baltimore. We had uh, we were there when George passed away, and we had a memorial for him. Uh, my my brother told us that he he was having his own problems. His, he had had a I, I knew he had had problems with drinking. It just really started to take its toll. And I'll, I'll tell you guys, if you, you get yeah, you know, it can can be fun when you're younger. It really catches up to you. You get in your your 40s and 50s, and yeah, you know, things were really starting to go go downhill. So. I, 
he really was at a crisis point. So after the memorial, he'd gone home, he enrolled in a 30-day rehab program, came out, just started drinking again. Things were really, really going down, downhill fast. So I was getting more and more calls from Carolyn, from my sister. It was just the most helpless feeling. My big brother, my guide through life, you know, is, he's going some path that I couldn't possibly go. So basically it just, it, it took him down. His heart gave out. And so, it, so come June, at age 55, he passed away. I was out there again, and I have to say, you, you just don't get used to it. You know, having these memorials over and over again, they go out there. So another, another trip east, another memorial. In October that year, Steve Jobs died. He was the same age as my brother. So we had a memorial for him on, on the Apple campus. At that memorial, one of the speakers quoted from a speech that he'd given at Stanford. He said, don't spend your time living someone else's life. Well, now. Okay, okay, God, I get the message. You've been hammering something to me, tell me about it. All right, so if you're going to make a really big decision like this, make a big change, what do you do? Best thing is to talk to a lot of other people. So I talked to some of the Cub Scout parents, said, am I nuts when I think about this? Oh, no, you'll be great. This will be great. You'll really, you'll really be good at this. I talked to my uh, kids' teachers. They were a wonderful source of inspiration. A lot of them were second career people, too. They said, yeah, that will be really good. In fact, even here on the campus, Mike Green was a computer science teacher. He was a bi big help, big inspiration to me. So I took a deep breath, said, OK, let's go ahead and do this. Let's get the application together. So I applied to Santa Clara University. So I quit my job at Apple at the end of July, and in we go. Away we go. So it was a very intense year. As I have student teaching by day and taking classes at night, the very first day at Mount Pleasant, where I was doing my student teaching, I came in there. The day before, my oldest son, Andrew, the little baby you saw here, had left for college. So I come in there, all these juniors and seniors are looking up at me, and I just look at him and say, my baby, so I love you guys, can I take you home? Oh, <laughs> I still get that feeling when I come to the classroom and see you guys, oh, you're all my kids, can I take you all home? <laughs> oh, but no, I'll send you home at the end of the day, let, let your parents take care of you. <laughs> okay, so. My wife, poor Liz, she bore the brunt of it. That year, we, our, our four kids were in four different schools, and I was in a fifth, so I, I, I still owe her to this very day for taking care of all that. So uh, come February that year, Mr. Green told me, there was an opening for a science teacher at Midi. You should look at it. So I jumped at it, because I knew at this time what a great place Midi was. So I, I went, went right into it. And things happened really fast. We had on-campus interviews at Santa Clara. I met Mr. Matthews and came on campus. I came to see Mr. Brosnan. He said, welcome aboard. Great, here we are. So look, fast forward five years later, here I am. I've never looked back. Yeah, life is short, I realize that. I welcome every day as a gift from God. I wake up in the morning and say, oh, I'm alive, all right, here we go, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> Some days it takes a little while before you get to that point. Okay, I guess I am alive, all right, here we go. <laughs> yes. So the thing that I, I love, the thing I really love about MIDI is just I feel the love from you guys. I really feel every day in the classroom, I feel that love. Sometimes I, I, I see a, people like, um, a, this year I see a, a really sharp student, someone like Amaya Nerv, is really sharp, really on top of the, the subject. She, she uses her gifts to help her classmates, really help them get through. Last year I had a, a group, I had uh, Taylor Coates and Maggie O'Brien, they're my constant companions on the off period, so let's make this happen. Uh, Monica Gonzalez was struggling, but she put in that extra effort, really got through. It was great, really wonderful to see everything that you can do. Uh, this year, I have Kate Myers, my faithful companion. She's there at the review sessions, making it all happen. It's really, really great, really wonderful to see, see what's going on. I did want to mention something else. I also teach a class, teach a senior elective in Science of Sound and Music. That This year, I have Noah Robles in my class. I'm really blessed to have him. We were doing a lesson on a rather tricky concept about how temperament works in music. And he had brought in his keyboard and said, oh, here, Dr. Scott, I can show you this. He just sets up the keyboard. Here, I can play this temperament. I can play this piece. I can do this, this. I had, to, I had five videos queued up, but he just went ahead, just j jumped right in and did it all himself. So it was, it, it was great. It was really incredible. One of those moments you just dream about having as a teacher. It was really, really awesome. OK. So I also wanted to mention, uh, last week, we had our faculty collaboration. I, I swung by the math department. Uh, Ms. Monk was there. She said, oh, here we have an extra donut. You can have a donut. So I said, well, I told her I'd give her a shout out at collaborate at today. So here you go. <laughs> OK. So everything you do here is, is amazing. So don't keep waiting for the right time. 
you got to go on. And I just realized I've forgotten a couple of my slides. I have to show a few of them, but the great things that we've done. Among other things, we have our campus ministry. We do our retreats. Here's our quest retreat group. I also am involved with the life team. So the love that you show from that. Yes, RBC, all, all the things we do are, are really, really amazing things here. So don't keep waiting for the right time. This is your moment. I want to say, we, we talk about this in physics a little bit. We, we, we have a vector. Your life is like a vector. It's got direction and magnitude. Oh, yeah. I know. All right. Yes. Shout out to the villain Vector from Despicable Me. He's our guide through physics. All right. OK. Good. OK, guys. So my last thoughts. So really want to, want to keep in mind, life is short. Don't wait for the right time. This is your moment. It's time to change the world. Thank you very much.